are these people? We need to talk about Asa Wynn Stanley. All right. Asa Wynn Stanley, um, as well as some of the other folks here, this is our friend the dissident wrote, it's officially illegal to criticize the Israel in the UK now. Or Section 12 of the UK Terrorism Act is being weaponized to crack down on anti-Zionist journalists. Anna Mayers, by the way, if you want to go to kick.com, I can see your tw your chats up on screen up on kick.com slash Indie News Network if you're there. It's official. Being an anti-Zionist journalist in the UK is now illegal. I'm sorry to all my friends over there. The UK government for the fourth time has used Section 12 of the Terrorism Act to crack down on a journalist criticizing Israel. For context, Section 12 of the UK Terrorism Act, which was passed in 2006, makes it a criminal offense to, quote, express an opinion or belief that is supportive of a proscribed terrorist organization. For a while, the UK government used the act to crack down on journalists who did reporting that was inconvenient for the official establishment narrative in London. The slippery slope to full authoritarianism began with Britain regularly detaining journalists who reported in a way that was critical of British and Western foreign policy. Some notable examples. In 2013, they used Section 12 to detain the late Brazilian politician David Miranda, formerly married to Glenn Greenwald, for his work on the Snowden leaks. In 2021, they used Section 12 to detain Vanessa Bealey, which you can hear about when she talked about it with Reef and Colin on INN News a few weeks ago. She's a British journalist who reports on the ground in Syria. She was detained for six hours at Heathrow. Last year, very famously, our friend of the show and Indie Media Award honoree, as is Vanessa, uh, Belgrade-based journalist Kit Clarenberg, who reports for the Grey Zone, another award honoree, often using leaked documents exposing the UK security state, was detained at the Luton Airport when he returned to Britain. And of course, another also famously former UK ambassador, Craig Murray, who is a vocal supporter of both Palestine and WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, was detained and investigated WikiLeaks. for terrorism charges under Section 12 last year. As disturbing and authoritarian... No, no, what's, it's a Julian's bar in gym, man. Julian. It could be Julian that fucked up the... Uh... Icky leaks or licky, licky leaks, licky leaks. All right. <laughs> as the disturbing authoritarian as these instances were, they were only a small taste of what was yet to come. Since Israel began their genocide in Gaza, backed by the UK and United States, they have used Section 12 of the Terrorism Act to not just detain, but arrest and charge any journalist critical of Israel. I wouldn't say any jail, right away. I wouldn't say any, but I would say specific ones that really start to get on their nerves and, and make headway. Because there are certainly more that haven't been arrested or detained yet, and I'm hoping they don't. Because groups such as Hezbollah, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and Hamas are officially proscribed as terrorist organizations by the UK government for things like aiming to end the Israeli occupation of Palestine and being committed to armed resistance to the state of Israel, they are likely labeling journalists who oppose the Israeli genocide in Gaza and current invasion of Lebanon as supporters of these groups and charging them as supporters of proscribed organizations for daring to oppose Israel's barbarism in these countries. The act was first used on independent journalist Richard Medhurst, who was detained and charged at London's, he London's Heathrow Airport for expressing support for a proscribed terrorist organization. Medhurst has been unable to discuss the details of his charges as it is an ongoing case, but he has made clear that it was over his opposition to Israel's genocide in Gaza and his support for Palestine. It certainly was, I mean, look, he had been reporting on Russia and Ukraine for years. They didn't do that to him. When journalists... Wake up, asshole! Yeah, he did. When journalist Max Blumenthal asked Medhurst about the details of his charges, he said, anything you say that makes Israel look bad, they can just interpret as you trying to make Hamas look good. 
he was clearly signaling that they used his reporting about the genocide in Gaza to paint him as a supporter of a proscribed org organization in the Middle East and charge him on that basis. The British crackdown on anti-genocide journalists didn't stop at Medhurst. After his arrest and charges, the UK government again used Section 12 of the Terrorism Act to charge pro-Palestinian journalists. Soon after Medhurst's arrest, they charged activist Richard Barnard from the Palestine Action Group for expressing an opinion that is supportive of a proscribed organization. No draconian. The UK feds also raided the house of pro-Palestine journalist Sarah Wilkinson and took her phone, passport, and electronics and arrested her for content that she's posted online. Yes, they've now since given her back her devices and said that she could tweet again after a major out outcry and backlash. As the independent investigative outlet Declassified UK said, anti-terrorism laws are being increasingly used, seemingly with the backing of the new Labour government, to intimidate protesters against deadly Israeli attacks on Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. Well, remember when we covered uh, that terror expo, that anti-terrorism stuff was all over that place. Oh, yeah. You know, and that was owned by the like Saudi how government. How to spot anti-Palestinian using, you know, I'm sure there's a VR training just for that scenario. So, you know. Yes, we did use a Trailer Park Boys uh, reference, J-Dub. Um, yeah. Richard posted this Saturday, uh, Friday night late, or Friday afternoon. The police have extended their terrorism investigation and his bail by three months. Yeah. Way to have due process. Right to jail, right away. Go start. U.S. government is well aware that Israel has nukes and therefore the U.S. government is breaking their own Leahy Act by supplying arms to Israel exactly as Anna, uh, as Sam Hussein Leahy. directly... As, as Sam Husseini directly asked him before. Yes, correct. So getting back, getting back to this is the dissident, friend of, friend of the network, um, former co-founder for INN. Today, a fourth journalist had been raided by the British feds for opposing the genocide in Gaza. Asa, Win Asa Winstanley, a reporter for the Electronic Intifada, an independent. Yep. Yep. According to the site's editor, Ali Abu Nima, we're going to hear from him in a minute, Wynn Stanley's home was raided by the Counterterrorism Command of the Metropolitan Police Service. Yep, those guys, who seized several electronic devices from him, and he's now being investigated under Section 12 for social media posts, which they claim Stop. to be... You violated the law. ...maybe an encouragement of terrorism by reporting what mm -hmm. Israel is doing, the war crimes that they're committing. Wynn Stanley is another reporter who's focused his reporting on Israel's crimes in Gaza and Lebanon and Syria and debunked the propaganda used to sell them. On the anniversary of the October 7th attacks, he published an article debunking the atrocity propaganda used by the UK and other Western governments to justify continuing the Gaza genocide. This is likely what triggered the UK government to weaponize the terrorism act against him. Human Rights Watch has said that Section 12 of the Terrorist Act makes the definition of the encouragement of terrorism offense overly broad, raising serious concerns about undue infringement on free speech, of which the UK doesn't really offer. But this was clearly the intention of the section. The UK government is using it to implement fascist narrative control. Yep. Backing Israel's genocide in Gaza has been one of the hardest things for Western foreign policy establishment to sell to the public. As Euromed Monitor discovered, nine out of every 10 people killed by Israel in Gaza is a civilian. I'm going to repeat yep. that fact because that seems vaguely important. Nine out of every 10 people murdered by Israel with American and UK weaponry in Gaza is a civilian. Destroy us all! 
When projected indirect deaths are included, Israel's genocide has killed over 100,000 people, conservatively, and the Israeli government has made blatantly genocidal statements towards Palestinians. Even mainstream podcast hosts in Israel say openly genocidal statements, such as when the hosts of the Two Nice Jewish Boys podcast fantasized about pushing a button that would erase every single living being in Gaza. It's graceful. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. In Lebanon, Israel's pager attack was so brutal that even former CIA director Leon Panetta said it was a form of terrorism. And the rejoicing, the quote-unquote beep-beep bullshit that the Zionists were putting out, they were all excited. Hmm. You know you know, I have to say, I actually spoke to a doctor, a surgeon, who I mentioned that pager thing to. He goes, yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I said, wait, you're a doctor. They Jeez did that to Christ. doctors. They did that. I said, they could do that to you. He goes, oh, he goes, well, the direction you can fuck. He said, they, they, they wouldn't do it to me. I said, really? You, you cool with sending all those weapons to Israel? No, they may do that to you. The propaganda used to justify huh? the genocide is some of the most blatantly obvious falsehoods put forward by the establishment. The 40 beheaded babies and mass rape hoaxes fell apart quickly, and even mainstream Israeli media and Australian state media have admitted that Israel issues the, issued the Hannibal Directive on October 7th, killing many of their own people. But one doesn't even have to know these facts to know that what Israel is doing in Gaza backed by Western powers, is wrong. Anyone who even remotely follows international affairs has seen daily videos of some of the most horrific atrocities committed in history. The recent images of civilians being burned alive after Israel bombed the refugee camp hospital are just some of the countless videos and photos documenting Israel's war crimes committed against civilians in Gaza. They're documenting it themselves. There's an incredible Al Jazeera documentary that they've assembled from IDF soldiers' TikToks where they're admitting and live streaming their genocide and their war crimes. It was them. And they admitted it was them. Proudly. It wasn't me. Because they're not going to be held accountable. Instead of accepting that the Zionist narrative can no longer be sustained and accepted by the public, the UK government has instead opted to criminalize factual reporting on Israel's war crimes and label any journalist who dares challenge the narrative, the, the genocide, as a terrorist. This means that the UK is no longer a democracy or a free and open society at all, as if it ever were. If jailing anyone who opposes genocide on terrorism charges is in full-on autocracy, I don't know what is. Julian Assange, anyone? Again, my friend Ricky, Council of State Media, this is insane. Asa Winstanley has now been arrested by counterterrorism police. When I say we're all sitting ducks in the UK, I'm not exaggerating. We're not allowed to criticize Israel's genocide. The easiest thing to do would be to shut up about it and write about trivial things instead, but I'm not prepared to do that. Literally, the last thing I want to be writing about is a fucking genocide, but until it stops, I won't. If my government wants to treat me as a criminal for that, so be it. God bless him. Ricky, Council of State Media. I, and I suggested, brother, you might want to take a holiday somewhere and set up shop where you won't get arrested for speaking out. And he said that if he didn't have kids, he would leave the country. But like me, he's got kids. And thankfully, they haven't started mm -hmm. doing that here yet. But the UK is always six months ahead, foreign policy-wise, of what the US is doing. So I fully expect that to start happening here within about the next six months, especially if they rig it for Harris. Jonathan Cook, yeah. another, another Indie Media Award honoree, wrote this. A message, to history, a message from history to my fellow journalists on the British state's persecution of Asa Winstanley. And it's titled, They Never Came For Me Because I Wasn't a Real Journalist. First, they came for Julian Assange, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't Julian Assange. Then they came for the Palestinian journalists, 
And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a Palestinian journalist. Then they came for the independent journalists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't an independent journalist. And then they came for the investigative journalists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't an investigative journalist. And then they never came for me, and I never spoke out because I wasn't a real journalist. Julian that fucked up the uh, Ick Icky Leaks or the who? The pity key or whatever the fuck that. Never mind. What the pity keys? What? Who's a Julian, wasn't he? The, the fucked up the what? The lick, licky leaks or. The lick, what? What is the licky leaks? I right licky now, leaks. The Julian Assanges. Boom. The Jesse. Fucking dummy. Yeah. This article is, is by the dissident. The 307.substack.com is his, UR, is his uh, substack. He's great. Again, Jonathan Cook, also Indie Media Award honoree. Great dude. Follow him, support him. Solidarity with Jer Jeremy Lafredo too. Vicky Adams, thank you. Um, I did want to mention and bring what Ali Abunimo, the editor of the Electronic Intifada and Ace's boss uh, at, at the Intifada, had to say about this. Um, I just grabbed a couple of things from the article, which had mirrored a lot of what the dissident had said, but th these were some unique things. Although his devices were seized, he was not arrested and has not been charged with any offense. He's on, he is active on social media, several social media platforms and has more than 100,000 followers on Twitter, where he frequently shares articles, other people's opinions, and his own comments on Israel's crimes against the Palestinian people, British government support for those crimes, and the Palestinian resistance to Israeli occupation, apartheid, and genocide. As we all do, the vaguely worded provisions relating to encouragement of terrorism would clearly violate the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, guaranteeing freedom of speech. However, like I said earlier, the U.K. lacks similar constitutional protections for freedom of expression. The draconian legislation curtails a range of freedoms, according to the University of Edinburgh Law Professor Andrew Cornford including the freedoms to discuss controversial topics openly and to share moral, political, and religious opinions, unquote. Again, reminder, in December, Winstanley Stanley reported for the EI on how British counterterrorism police arrested Mick Napier and Tony Greenstein, two prominent activists, for saying that they support the Palestinian right to resist Israel, a right enshrined in international law. And I believe... INN actually has a t-shirt that you can purchase and a sticker at innshop.com or innmerch.com. Innmerch. Dot something. I don't know. It's in the ticker. But we've got a shirt about that. 30.330. One of those, yeah. Or it's at indienews.shop. You can That's just it. go there because it's you. easy to remember. That's the one. As part of his bail conditions, Greenstein, an author and contributor to EI, was ordered not to post on Twitter in regards to the ongoing conflict in Gaza. That is so draconian and authoritarian, that's insane! Mm -hmm. The letter handed to Win Stanley by police refers to the raid on his home as being part of Operation Incessantness perhaps an indicative of a broad and ongoing crackdown against critics of Israel's British-backed crimes. Win Stanley's most recent investigative article, How Israel Killed Hundreds of Its Own People on October 7th, brings together a year of the electronic intifada's reporting, along with new information detailing Israel's use of the Hannibal Directive, a secret order that allows Israeli forces to murder their own citizens rather than allowing them to be taken captive. Win Stanley is the author of Weaponizing Antisemitism, How the Israel Lobby Brought Down Jeremy Corbyn, a book culminating from his years of reporting on Britain's Labour Party while it was in opposition. They just happen to be back in power now, huh? Since 2019, mm -hmm. the Labour Party launched an investigation and has made legal threats in apparent, in apparent retaliation for Win Stanley's journalism. Now that Labour is the UK's ruling party, it has, the, it has the potential to use the apparatus of the state against those it views as its own, or Israel's, 
potential enemies. The raid on Winstanley's home is clearly intended to intimidate and silence him, as well as other journalists and activists. As far as the EI is concerned, it will have only the opposite effect. Our colleague, Asa Winstanley, can count on our full support and solidarity, and as a publication, we will continue to pursue with vigor any stories documenting British complicity in Israel's war crimes. And he had issued a statement on Friday morning, quote, thank you so much to everyone for the torrent of support and solidarity you've sent my way. Your messages of love and support have been very important to us in the context of an experience no one should have to go through. I dedicated my career to journalism and telling the truth, but right now my priority is the protection for, of my sources. We're taking legal steps to ensure that happens. Journalism is not a crime. You've seen that across the scrolling ticker of this show for years. And Cheeky, a few hours later, he gets back out and he gets on Twitter and he says, Hello, my enemies. May you have a very, very bad day. You didn't think you'd get rid of me that easily, did you? <laughs> solidarity with Asa. Solidarity with the EI. Solidarity with all the British journalists that are literally putting their lives and their freedom on the line to report on Israel's crimes. And stories like that are why we're demonetized and will probably never be remonetized at YouTube. Please support us at Cash App over at Kofi if you can. They take the least amount of Money, fees. Please. They allow us to retain the most amount of what you give if your intent is to help us and support us and not the platform that we're using. Please use one of those two methods if you can. You can also subscribe on Patreon or over on innnewsletter.com. Thank you to Anna. Thank you to Charlie. Thank you to Kamishori, Kate, and Sean Miller. Also at paypal.me slash network. If you go over and you do PayPal directly, you can see your friends and family. That is also zero charge and cost to us. And once more, you can find us on... You fool! I have 70 alternative accounts! <laughs> is, is Anthony Malecki... Was that Anthony Malecki? <laughs> it might nope. have been. It might have been. Elijah Fire, thank you. Welcome. Um, these are all the channels you can find read your us. Read seventy alternative accounts. Nope, not going to do that. I did that before. You can find <laughs> us on all of those. innnewsletter.com is the only one I care about, and go to indienews.network, which isn't even up there. That's the main channel where you can find all of these links to all these channels.